The connection is a USB-C. You have to use a proper cable for it to transfer data. Some, some USB-C cables do not work. On the Betaflight version, the indicator should come on immediately. This is the GPS unit, which is the Bayesian 880. It has the magnetometer and compass. This is the LiDAR unit by Maytech. OK, going to the software, we can see that we're not connected. We need to do a firmware flash. We don't want to actually connect. There's nothing to connect to. So let's go to the firmware flasher so we can get into iNav. The board I'm using is a Diatone Mamba F405. We find it in the menu here. This is the exact target that is listed on mine. Click that and then uh, the latest firmware. Several versions, I don't know why. We don't need to uh, do this, but we do need to do a full erase it will automatically reboot. Okay, we've loaded the uh, firmware onto the computer, or at least onto the internet online. And then there are some notes. Uh, not much is very important, except that the, up here you'll see, some features have been dropped from the F series. They don't say what features. So let's just flash the firmware because that's the firmware we're going to be flashing anyway. So here we go. There goes Betaflight. It takes a while to load the flash. So you might want to load a bowl or go to the fridge, get something to drink. I don't need to show you all of this, but it's recorded, so I'm going to just let it go rather than speed it up. From the midpoint on, you'll see it changes to verifying and then we'll get a uh, success. Uh, now we should be able to connect to the flight controller, but we won't hear all of its beeps. Uh, we want a quad. I don't know why it's limited to seven inches. That doesn't... So when we come back from this boot, you will see a block that represents the flight controller. It doesn't know that we're an aircraft yet because it's not connected to the ESC. So the first thing we need to do is go, uh, is go to the mixer and uh, tell the ESC what's going on. Okay, it's already set for this multi-rotor, which is what we want. The direction is a standard thing, it's a quad. We have to load this though, so let's click on that. It's going to tell you there will be changes, that's fine. Now when you come back, you should hear your full set of beeps. Now, the motors won't do anything, so we have to go to Outputs and turn them on. And that's right here, Enabling the Motors. Turn that on. We're in DSHOT 600. We don't need to change these two settings. That motor idle is kind of high. I would like to lower that. Let's make that 
Let's make that five for now. That's very high. I don't know why that would be so high, but it might be four different aircraft that it needs that much. My motors are big. They are 14 magnets, so I only leave that alone. I'm not going to do a motor test yet because I don't have the power on. So let's save these settings. And now, uh, now the motors will work. So I'm going to move into calibration because I don't need to set motors yet. Calibration you know how to do. So mine is currently sitting upright. I will turn it upside down and calibrate it upside down. I will face it to the left. I will face it up. Sorry, down. I will face it to the right. and facing upward. And calibration is complete. All right, we won't get into calibrating the compass or the optic flow yet because those will require power. Uh, you can see now that we're looking at the aircraft instead of the block and that takes us to the end of that segment. All right, we're going to move into UARTs. This is the standard setup for uh, DJI. This is not, I've preset these. It, this is not how it comes um, when you get here. You'll see DJI is an option here in peripherals, but if you turn that on it, it, the, the, and leave this off, the software doesn't know what to do. The flight controller doesn't know what to do. So you just do it this way. Um, the optic flow and range finder, which are on the LiDAR unit, uh, say that there need to be here, but they don't. They the they very specifically tell you when you go to this to the graph to use MSP. This in, in this place it says UART six. We're not on UART six. We're on four. But MSP on the rangefinder and optic flow, so they can stay on the same UART. So we're going to leave that at four and turn that on. Now GPS. My understanding is that it does work under the sensors, and we will turn it on here instead of under MSP and save all of that. And save all of that. All right. When we come back, we will go into configuration and you will find the accelerometer is already decided. The magnetometer I have to set at this particular model because that's what my specs say. The barometer is my understanding is that we are on BMP 280 and that seems to work. The rangefinder and optic flow do not have to have settings because MSP is one of their uh, routes. So let's g set both of those at the same. Uh, the magnetometer alignment, we don't know until we turn it all on and see on the goggles. So we won't know that. We're going to turn on GPS. It is a U-Blox protocol uh, because it's Bayesian 880. Um, I'm going to turn on the GPS the Galileo satellites. I'm not going to do too much here on the right column. This is all for monitoring um, and power and uh, we don't need all of that yet. 
So uh, battery settings, and I'm going to turn off enable motors for uh, servos. We don't have any servos. Uh, if we had a camera, servo, or the like, uh, that would matter. But it doesn't. And here we have uh, voltage monitoring. I guess I can turn that on. Uh, and after that, we should just save it. Okay, this should turn on everything on the top row. We should see magnetometer, barometer, GPS, flow, and sonar. And that'll be the end of this segment.